sport is emerging from the open lawn of universities and colleges. This sport challenges the ability to bend a disc in mid-air, and it takes the athletic ability to sprint, jump, lunge, and even dive to attack and, and capture that disc for possession and for victory. It's called ultimate frisbee, and it's a sport that's almost in every single high school and college campus. Now, I am an ultimate frisbee player, so I know the ins and outs of different games in, in the frisbee realm. And I'd like to pass this information about Ultimate Frisbee to you, along with its popularity, because I feel like this will be as common as any other school sport. Now, first we're going to be talking about how it came to be, very briefly. Then I'll talk to you about the different rules in a summarized way, because there's plenty of them. And then I'll talk to you about the two main throws that you'll see if you're playing. Now, before I start talking about the rules, like I said, I'll talk to you about how it came to be. It was first invented in Maplewood, New Jersey in 1968. And according to New York Times in 2009, within, ten, within the past 10 years, it's expanded to 42 different countries for both men and women players. Now, ultimate, ultimate success in growing so largely is that they took other athletes from soccer and football and other sports like that and brought them to start to play. And they accepted the challenge. Now, now that you know about how it came to be, I'm going to talk to you about the rules and guidelines and how it's played and what you're going to expect if you step on the field. Typically, it's a 7-on-7 seven seven game, and it has a speed and endurance of soccer and the aerial play and, how, and the same sex type of scoring with football. Once, you, once a player receives the, the, the disc, they cannot run, they don't move, they just stand there, and they have to pass it to another player, but they have 10 seconds to do so. Now, I'm not saying that it's going to be simple, it's not easy like that, there are fouls to be called, but there are no referees on the field, so they have to call their own fouls. So there typically is no contact allowed in the sport, and if the handler, the person in control of the frisbee, if they get, if they get hit by the defender when trying to throw, they restart the play. If they hit the defender so they can throw, they lose possession. And like I said before, they only have 10 seconds to throw, and one, once 10 seconds runs out, they lose possession. Now, when running, the cutters or the receivers and the defenders, there are not supposed to be any forms of contact. But there is the one exception that because the first is up in the air and you need to jump or dive for it, there you are allowed to contest your other player. So there are people colliding and there are people jumping up into each other, but in the air, that's the only time it's allowed. Now, congratulations, <laughs> you know how to play. It's very simple when you start to get the gist of it. Now, I'm going to talk to you about the different types of throws, but there's two main ones I want to talk to, talk to you about. And one is the backhand. So, does anybody have a frisbee? Thank you. What is the backhand throw? So, typically, this is the most common and most natural throw. When you do it, you have thumb on top and fingers underneath, firmly holding, and it's like an uncoiling motion. So, it's like this. And you follow through with your arm. Now, this can be used for short, medium, and long passes. The other one is a forehand, also called a flick. The reason why it's called a flick is because it's the motion that your wrist is doing when you throw it. Typically, you have your thumb on top, and for the most part, most people do it. I've seen people who have done, who have not, and used one or three fingers, but you typically use two underneath. And the other fingers just rest in the fist, again, firmly grasping. So the reason why it's called a flick is because you flip your wrist. Unlike the backhand, when you go all the way with your arm, it's just your wrist, but you can follow through. So when you do so, it's all in the hips. But then again, this isn't the most natural throw, so most people who play, if they can throw a flick, they've been practicing. So there you go. You know what to expect when you, go, when you get out there, and I hope you understand that this is the reason why Ultimate Frisbee is a pretty unique activity. Now, I talked to you about how it came to be, how people know it, how it expanded. I talked to you about the rules and how to play safely, consciously, but still have a good time playing it. And lastly, how to throw it so that you, you don't go out there and you miss your receiver like there's no tomorrow. So, but I hope you know that it's important that you play properly because that's what makes it more safe and definitely more fun and more exciting. So all sports have a beginning, whether it's in somebody's backyard, or in a public setting, like in the universities and colleges. But the idea to show your full strength in, in this sport is to understand that you can dive, 
jump, sprint, or even lunge, not just to score, not just for victory, but to show your true sport abilities. So I consider this a legitimate sport. And I hope that when you play, you can show your best, because you need to show your best not to play frisbee. Thank you. That was